All right, all right. Today, SPY made a new all-time high, and we did close up 0.33% higher. And I just want to start out today zoomed out, and I want to show you we are getting very overextended above this rising 200 daily moving average, and we haven't hit the 50 EMA ever since we broke back above it all the way back there in November. So if you are wondering when the stock market is likely going to see a correction, it will likely be in this next quarter coming up. Once we finish up this quarter, which is going to end next week, we really need to start thinking about the possibility possibility the stock market will go through a technical correction. So keep in mind when I say technical correction, we're not looking for any scapegoats or any news on why the market's going to correct. It's just very common that the market goes through highs and lows, and we are currently in a very bullish cycle that will eventually need a correction before we can go any higher in this bull market. Now, if you still don't know this is a bull market, you are completely just straight out lost, and we just had the financial sector making a brand new all-time high, and we have all of the sectors making new all-time highs, and there is nothing else you can call that except a bull market. So we will be looking for corrections and then continuing higher as long as we have a bull market and you should expect a bull market until there is some major catalyst or black swan event within the economy or the world that causes this bull market to roll over and die and obviously one of the most obvious black swan events that would cause that would be a major recession within the united states so try to block out noise and follow your chart because this is obviously a bull market. And in a bull market, we will need corrections along the way. But as you can tell, this is very healthy price action that we continue to bounce off of this rising 20 daily moving average before we make the next all-time high. And that really reduces the need for a major correction. So we may only come back down here towards about 500 or maybe to close this gap right around 497 before we find significant buyers in this market yet again and still continue to go higher. So we're not looking for a crash, and I think the people looking for a crash are not going to do well this year because when you're looking for a crash, it changes your emotional state, and there's no way you're going to be buying the dip up here near all-time highs if you're constantly worried about a stock market crash. So just keep all of that in the back of your mind. I wanted to start out with the zoomed out view so that you understand even if we start to get a pullback and a correction, it is going to be very mild within a bull market, and it is not something you really should be fearing. If you're a bull, those are your opportunities to buy the dips and there are really great buy the dip opportunities within this market currently even though the indices are trading up here at the all-time highs so i still will tell you this is a stock pickers market and i still will tell you that you are going to do very well if you correctly identify those stocks and that is what we are going to continue focusing on in the stock channel discord server so let's go ahead and throw the lines back on this chart and zoom in here. And there's one important thing we need to talk about today is that we did gap up to a brand new all time high outside the upper Bollinger Band. And when you gap up and you leave a gap open at a brand new all time high, there is a 100% guarantee that that gap is going to fill. And that one's for free because I'm telling you right now, this gap absolutely has to fill. And it is very likely going to fill sooner rather than later. So that gives us one of two scenarios. We are going to either immediately fill that gap and then continue higher towards that price target up there at 525. Or we are going to go just a bit higher, which is unlikely because we're outside the Bollinger Band, and then immediately shift and come back down to fill that gap. So no matter how you spin it, that gap is likely going to fill in the very near future, and that's something you really should be aware of. Yes, it is a decent short trade, which means there are going to be a lot of bulls locking profits, and there are going to be a lot of bears selling the market until that gap fills, which is going to put a lot of selling pressure until that gap is fully closed. Now, if you look at some of these other gaps, those gaps will also fill, and I know for sure during the next stock market correction, we will come down here and fill this gap at 497. But again, that could be a long ways away, which could be a month or two, and if you're just aggressively shorting the market while it's in a strong bull trend just because there's a gap at 497, you're really going to miss out on a lot of quality long trades that you should be taking simply because you're trying to worry about a gap down there. So there's a big difference between these gaps. We've had price action within this gap zone. We have never had price action above 520. And that's why I'm telling you with 100% confidence that gap will fill because we need price discovery at those prices. So let's make this really simple. We are in a bull market and we need to stay bullish while we have this bull breakout above 517 and we are very likely coming back down towards this gap fill at 520 before we go to 525 or if we go to 525 first you should immediately be expecting a pullback back down to 520. So it's a very simple $5 range and we're staying bullish above 517 
and 517 from today's price action close is only 1% lower. So there will be a ton of people buying the dip for just a 1% pullback or even the pullback to close the gap at 520. So if you're still bearish, you can be bearish just a little bit longer. But once that gap at 520 closes, you need to really start considering closing out short positions and looking for more upside. That more upside will be that price target at 525. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.47% today and we hit a new all-time high and we did close at a new all-time high. So we've invalidated all of these double top and lower high looks. So the bulls are back in control, but just like SPY, we have a gap here at 444, which is very likely going to fill when the gap on SPY fills. Now this gap does have price discovery because we've seen these prices in the beginning of the month, but we don't have price discovery on SPY. So I'm confident both of these gaps will fill at the same time. But as you can see, the bulls did regain the bull trend and we simply just need to stay bullish while we're above 442 or you can even just stay bullish above 437 if you want more risk appetite now the next likely price target for the triple q's will be up here at 453 but these bollinger bands will need to start to expand so expect a pullback to close the gap before we go any higher so if we go a little higher first we're likely going to find sellers right around 449 before we fill the gap at 444 and then if we get buyers at the pullback and the gap fill brings in bulls that start to show up as we close the gap, then we will likely turn the corner and go all the way up there into the 450s before we see a deeper pullback sometime later in quarter two. So get used to the ebb and flow of the market because if you're in the flow of this market right now, you should be doing very well as long as you're being an unbiased price action trader. On the Dow Jones, we were up 0.7% today. And once more, I have a 100% guarantee we will fill this gap at 395 because we have no price discovery here and we're outside that upper bollinger band. And even though we are likely going to that price target at 400 that I gave you, it's possible we fill the gap at 395 before we go any higher. So whether we go to 400 and then 395 or 395 and then 400 is really what you need to figure out here. But do keep in mind what I told you, these gaps are guaranteed to fill. So there will be people that are simply shorting until those gaps fill, which is going to put a lot of downward pressure on the indices. For the Dow, I think it's just as simple as staying bullish above 391 because that's our bull breakout. And as long as we're above 391, we should be expecting higher prices. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 0.89% today and we did get the bull breakout above 207. And as these Bollinger Bands expand, I think we should hit my price target up there at 214. Remember, I told you this is one of those trades I thought we would knock out of the park and we are knocking this trade out of the park because it did exactly what we were expecting, which was the pullback into support to close the gap and then a run higher towards 214. Now that we're above 207, stay bull. And if we can't hold above 207, I would lock your profits until we can prove that the bulls can break above that level and hold it as support. So just to illustrate that, we'll move that support down towards the breakout. And that's why I think you should stay bullish above 207. On the RK ETF, we are 0.64% today and we are trying to fill the gap that was left open. So we likely come back down towards 50 and then if we find support and buyers at 50 we need to break that resistance at 51 and then we should be well on our way to the price target at 54.5 if we can't hold this support right around 50 i would get risk off because it means we're likely going to break down here and then come back down and break down below support at 48 on the VIX, we continue to break down. So we did break this trend of higher lows, which tells us fear is leaving the market. But now we need to talk about something else, which we can delete all of these higher lows because we no longer have them. But every time we've seen the VIX come down here towards 12.3 to 12.4, this is the zone where people are going to start loading up on cheap hedges. If you don't know what cheap hedges means, it simply means people are buying protection through the form of cheap puts because when the VIX is very low, that means we're in a strong bull trend. And that means most people are expecting the market to go higher. So they're not buying puts and that means the premium for those puts is a lot less and when it's a lot less you can get them a lot cheaper and that is a great time to load up some hedges while you can get some cheap puts now if you're just loading up on puts like a degenerate because you think the market's going to crash that is not a proper hedge that's just gambling if you're hedging properly you're only buying one put per 100 shares that you own of that stock so keep in mind hedging doesn't just mean you're gambling that just means you're putting a little protection on your positions in case we have a rainy day so don't be surprised if the vix doesn't break too much lower because every time the VIX gets down in this range, we should see proper hedging. Now, as long as the VIX is below 15, we still have a low fear bull market, even though I do think we are going to see a stock market correction in quarter two. And again, it's simply just going to be a technical correction. But during that correction, we will see it in the VIX and we will see a spike in fear. On Bitcoin, we're still holding above that support ever since we bounced at 61,000, but the bulls now need to break above the high here, just right around 68,500. So if you're just now waiting to get bullish, I would wait for that resistance to break. And then once that resistance breaks, that's a good indication we're going higher towards that price target at 75,000. Now, once we get to 75,000, there's a very good chance this market wants to do a major correction. And then we could come all the way back down to 52,000 
or if we don't break above 69,000, we could be heading there next. So longer term, I think Bitcoin needs a major correction before it's going to blast off to some crazy price targets that I've seen people talking about. And yes, while we will likely eventually hit some of those targets around the 100,000 range, I don't think it's going to be happening anytime soon. It's likely going to be coming next year. So longer term on Bitcoin, I think we are going higher, but shorter term, I think it's wise to protect yourself for a major correction, especially if we hit that price target at 75,000 and start to get high volume selling. On NVIDIA stock, we're up 1.18% today and we are starting to break out of this bull flag and I knew I drew that very messy, so we'll delete that. But as long as we have this bull trend, I do believe we're going to see NVIDIA breaking out to the price targets I have above at 994 to 1032. Yes, we can go higher than that, but that's at least where I think we're going. And then once we get there, that is likely going to be a major top within the indices and that could lead to that technical correction that I've been referencing in quarter two. So remember, nothing can go up forever with absolutely no corrections and NVIDIA is no different. And we did have a decent consolidation here if I draw this bull flag a bit better and that is what is likely going to give us enough energy to push higher towards that price target but once we get to that price target I expect to see the buyers getting exhausted and that should lead to a correction and that correction could be sizable just for the fact that there's a lot of people locking profits and when the bulls start to lock profits the smart bears are going to come out to play and they're going to continue to short the market lower so again these things are all technical there's no reason we need to put a news headline behind it and I know people like to do that and people like to try to trade the news, but just follow your damn chart and you're going to do just fine. And right now in NVIDIA, it looks like we're trying to go higher. On Tesla stock, we were down 1.62% today and we did come back down towards the support at 173. And we do need to acknowledge there's a gap down here at 165. So while I do believe we're going to 187, there may be some volatility here along the way before we get there. However, I do think we're going to be up there in the 180s by the end of the quarter close, which is simply by next week. So I do think you should be buying the dip in Tesla, but if you are very scared of buying the dip or a falling knife, we do need to acknowledge this is still in a bear trend. So if we are going lower, you still need to be prepared to see prices in the low 60s or high 150s. If that scares you and you don't want to buy that low, then you really shouldn't be buying up here if we can't hold this support at 173. So manage your risk at 173. And as long as we're above it, we are likely going higher towards 183 to 187. On Apple stock, we were down 4.09% today. And this is a stock we could talk about all day long because there is a major antitrust lawsuit right now. And in my opinion, it is total BS. There is no way that I think it has any merit but we don't need to debate that here. These things are not new to Apple. Apple has been sued for antitrust laws many times before and they never lose them. And I'm really not that worried about it, but I do need to caution you simply because we are in a technical bear trend and we did just get rejected from a lower high. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you to blindly buy the dip because of technical rules telling us we're in a bear trend that could go lower. And in a bear trend that can go lower, I did tell you from a lower high, we could come down here towards 167. Now, I believe once we get to 167, we would start to rocket from there and start to go back into another bull cycle. But obviously, I can't tell you that is the case until we get more technical evidence. But that would be my belief that even if we went to 167, that would be an extremely low risk buying opportunity for a longer term swing trade. So I'll leave that arrow on there just for the hell of it. I don't necessarily think we are going to 167. But if we do, I will continue to buy the dip in Apple stock. And as you can see, we did close all of these gaps now and we still have gaps way up here right around 187. So bigger picture, Apple is likely going to remain bullish and we are in a bull market and Apple has just finished a technical correction or in the process of hitting a bottom within a technical correction. So I am bullish on Apple in the longer term, but short term, I think we need to acknowledge we are sitting right here at a very important support at 171. And if that very important support at 171 fails, we will likely go to 167 or at least attempt to double bottom off of 169. So we should go ahead and add 169 as a possible support. So if we do break 171, look for 169 and 167. And do keep in mind, this is largely because people are simply getting risk off due to the lawsuit. And that typically leads to fear and panic selling and fear and panic selling are great times to be a contrarian and buy the dip. It's just that common saying, buy when everybody is fearful or buy when there's blood in the streets. So a 4% pullback in Apple stock is a great buy the dip opportunity. But again, we are in a technical downtrend and we just put in a lower high that could be heading lower. So just be aware of that. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, I rarely give you a 100% guarantee, but I'm doing that here. We will fill this gap. It's just a matter of when are we going to 525 first and then filling the gap or are we going straight down to fill the gap and then going higher? So do be aware of that. We are going to fill that gap very soon. And if you understand that, you should be completely prepared to handle any pullback that we have in the short term. So just 
remember everything I said in this episode. They're very important points you need to understand about technical corrections in quarter two and then simply being unbiased and understanding this is a bull market going higher and we have evidence from all of the sectors, including the financials. The financials are not making new all-time highs in bear markets and there's still so many people that are bearish, so you really just need to block out all of that noise and focus on your charts and you're going to do very well in this market. We're going to continue to crush this market in the Stock Channel Discord server and I still do believe it is a great stock picker's market, so we're going to focus focus on what are the best stocks to trade with the best risk reward ratios. So if you want to come trade with me and get access to all of my intraday updates and technical analysis and my trade ideas, then you need to come join the Stock Channel Discord server. You can find out how to join the Stock Channel Discord server by clicking on the links in the description of this video. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.